what I plan for today is a welding video. Now, I wouldn't recommend taking welding advice from me because I don't really know anything about welding. I'm actually pretty terrible at it, but I did get my first arc welder for Christmas. So, I do enjoy trying at least. And that's what today's video is about. Basically, the premise of this video is just like many of my other ones, when you got a job that you need to do and you don't really have the right equipment or parts to do it with. So we're gonna come up with a makeshift way to do a little bit of welding using an actual welder, but we're gonna substitute in something else for the electrodes. For that, we're just gonna go in here. This pile of laundry. coat hanger. Now I can barely weld and make something actually stick with a stick electrode. It's actually made for welding. But I got to thinking the other day, what would happen if I actually used a coat hanger? It's steel, right? Some kind of steel anyway. So let's cut this thing up and see if it'll weld something. Or maybe I'll get electrocuted, I don't know. But uh, I guess it goes without saying, don't try this at home unless you do this regularly. And in that case, then keep on doing your thing. Before we get this started, let's check in with my executive producer. See if he's ready for this new video we're about to shoot. Yeah, he's definitely ready. In fact, that's how he shoots all videos with me. And I really appreciate it when he sleeps like that because it lets me keep making these videos for you. Here we are, my messy shot. And the one thing I forgot is my light. So I'll be right back. All right, so here we are in my well-lit and messy shot. Let me get real technical on you here. This is a coat hanger. Standard issue steel, I think, coat hanger. And then we've got a welding electrode, uh, somewhat used. But anyway, this is a 6011 rod, 330 seconds of an inch. This is where we get technical. What I've got here is digital caliper of the highest quality, of course. And we're gonna use this to measure just how close that electrode compares to our makeshift electrode. So, see if you can see that. I'm gonna turn it on. Oh yeah. Zero it out. And let's measure our stick electrode. We're on inches. Eight six point eight seven. I'm not good at fractions, but I guess that's three thirty seconds of an inch. I'm gonna take their word for it because Hobart said so. So, let's see what our clothes hanger is. Clothes hanger is point eight point nine. I'm getting anywhere between point eight six and point nine three. Um, 0.82 seems to be pretty accurate, yeah. So 0.82, there you go. Not that much of a difference. Or seven or so, the thousandths of an inch. So, yeah, anyway, that's your technical overview. Not that much difference in size. Now, I guess I should go ahead and say that there is a difference. you have on a standard welding rod is, you can see it because my light's below the camera because I'm not good at this, is a flux core, I mean uh, not a flux core, a flux covering. Uh, I can break some of it off. It's, I don't know what it is, it's flux. So when the welding rod melts, the flux protects it from something. You know, if I, if I knew all this, 
I wouldn't be over here welding another coat hanger. But um, anyway, obviously our clothes hanger doesn't have any kind of coating. If it does, it's gonna be like something that's not flux. So without further ado, let's cut this thing up. I can find the tools I need. Okay. Wire cutters. Or, uh, garden shears, or whatever you want to call them. Anyway, let's, uh, let's make this a fair challenge here for the welding rod. And just grab one of my welding rods out of this nice box. This is actually 1 16th inch, 6013 rods. That I really prefer to use, but since they're 1 16th, they don't really penetrate that deep, especially in some steel like this. But I really just want to compare it just to get a good length, to make it a fair length. So, yeah. We'll just uh, grab our sharpie here and mark off where we want to cut this. So that should make it real uh, scientifically accurate. this again because I don't have any money to be buying a bunch of stick electrodes. That's for sure. Alright. Now, take our coat hanger. You can still see it. We're going to put it in our official wire cutters and try to cut them. Oh yes. Oh yes. Definitely works. So, Here's your life hack for the day. When you don't have any wire cutters, use garden shears, pruning shears, whatever you want to call them. All right. Put that over there in the pile of Ah, So, now we've got our makeshift welding electrode. So let's suit up for safety and see what I can do here. When you're welding, you always want to make sure to wear your welding gloves and welding shoes if you have them. Um, a lot of people have the standard issue welding shoes and your helmet, of course. So, now what we've got, along with all of our other high quality equipment here, we have this nice Mark 100D welder. Made by Smarter Tools, runs on 110 volts, and uh, it's supposed to do 49 amps or 70 amps. And since this is closer to a 330 seconds rod, we're gonna go ahead and do it on 70 amps. So, yeah, I imagine it will fit in the electrode holder, and it does. As you can see there, there's our electrode. All right. Well, now that we've got all our safety equipment on. Let's see if we can strike an arm with this thing.
our welding rod is glowing red. You can't see that, it's actually been. So we're gonna call that done. So, for a close up, I need to focus. All right, this is my typical poorly done welding job where I just tried to run a bead, like starting a pad of beads or something. And this is the abomination that just came from me trying to strike an arc with that clothes hanger wire. Um, and I think. Part of the issue here is this thing is not really strong enough to run 3 seconds rods. Uh, if anybody out there has got any 1 16th clothes hangers you want to send my way, that'd be great. Then I can finally figure out once and for all if you can weld with an arc welder and a clothes hanger. So if you feel like you've learned anything from this video, I feel sorry for you. But also give the video a thumbs up because it helps me out. And also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I know everybody asks for it, but it would really help me out. I'm at like 2,300 subscribers now, and so I would really like to blow that out of the water. And if you feel like this is a terrible idea or you could have done it better, then comment below and tell me how awesome you are. And if Chucky2009 sees this, then I'm sorry. Uh, I really enjoy your welding videos, and this is no reflection of the things I've learned from there. Uh, well, I guess that's about it. Oh, also, I've got an upcoming video on Cadex. I've been working with Cadex a little bit in the past uh, week or so. So, I've got a little homegrown Cadex work that I'd like to show off. Basically, making knife sheets. But, hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.